Have you noticed lately the price of everything has been going up? Here you go, bud. That'll be 45 bucks. 45 bucks? How are you hedged against inflation? Well, I ain't got no money. In today's video, I will show you how to hedge against inflation and even show you how to beat inflation. So if you want to protect your purchasing power and continue building your wealth, make sure you watch this video till the end. Disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor and this isn't investment advice. Always do your own research when considering any kind of investment. What is inflation? Inflation is when your money's buying power decreases over time. Goods and services remain the same, but the price of them increases. For example, 40 years ago, if you bought $100 worth of goods and services, those same goods and services would cost you $281 today. Inflation also has a little sneakier brother called shrinkflation. This is when the price remains relatively the same, but the size, quality, or quantity has decreased decrease. The average inflation rate in Canada is around 2%. Having this amount of inflation is actually good for the economy. But the Bank of Canada is forecasting to have an inflation rate of 4.8% for 2021. This high inflation can put a strain on the economy. Canadians are forced to pay more for the same product while their income remains the same. So as their buying power decreases, their quality of life decreases, or their net worths are reduced. Canadians who live paycheck to paycheck or small businesses will be affected the most. So what's the cause of this high inflation? These are the after effects of the pandemic. Too many dollars chasing too few goods. The pandemic has caused demand for goods to increase and at the same time cost supply to decrease. This combined with the government increasing money supply is the perfect storm for higher inflation. Now before we get into the list, if you're new to my channel, which you probably aren't because inflation is a boring topic and YouTube won't recommend this video, just in case though, subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell icon to get notified when a new video comes out. Let's get into it. The first thing you can do to beat inflation is increase your income. If the average inflation rate is 2% per year, your annual income needs to increase by 2% a year to maintain your lifestyle. 2% may not seem like a lot, but in just five years, that's a 10% inflation rate. If you're still making the same income you did five years ago, you're doing it wrong. You have a few options here. First, ask for a raise, then work more hours. If you can't get a raise or get more hours, think about changing employers for higher pay. If that doesn't work, upgrade or change your career path. Also, your nine to five shouldn't be your only source of income. The more streams of income you have, the more your income will increase. You can get a part-time job, start a little side business, or find ways to make passive income. This is income that pays you with little to no work required. I've already made two videos on passive income, so if you want to learn what they are, check out this video up here. Keep on record what you make every year. This can be found on your notice of assessment. And make sure you're increasing your income by at least 2% every year. You'll need to increase your income even more when inflation is high. The next thing you can do to beat inflation is invest in stock market. The average return for the S&P 500 is 10% a year. After inflation, the average return will be around 7 to 8% per year. Achieving this return can be easily done by investing in an S&P 500 ETF long term. Or if you want possibly greater returns or possibly lower returns, you can invest in individual stocks. This will require more knowledge in the stock market and more time. The easiest way to invest in a stock market, which I think is best for beginners and the most passive, is with a robo-advisor. My favorite robo-advisor is Wealth Simple Invest. Zero knowledge of investing or the stock market required and zero time required. Just answer a few questions when you sign up. They'll recommend a portfolio and then you can set up auto deposits and make it completely passive. While inflation is chipping away at your buying power, your stock portfolio is growing at a higher rate. If Wealth Simple sounds like something you're interested in, get a $50 sign up bonus when you use my link found in the video description below. Now, if you want to hedge against inflation, precious metals have been proven to do so. The most popular choice to add to your investment portfolio is gold and silver. These precious metals were once legal tender and are believed to have been sought after as early as 6,000 years ago. Robert Kiyosaki calls them God's metals. When a stock market crashes, investors tend to flock to gold and silver for a store of value. Also, when inflation is higher than normal, the returns on gold and silver increase. And I'm not talking about precious metal ETFs, or what they call paper gold and silver. I'm talking about the physical metal. Like the saying goes, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Although a bit controversial as an investment, gold and silver are still considered a hedge against inflation. I much prefer silver just because of its industrial use, future industrial use, and I believe it to be greatly undervalued. Check out silvergoldbull.com for all your precious metal needs. Another alternative asset you can add to your investment portfolio is peer-to-peer -peer lending loans. Peer-to-peer -peer lending is considered to have low correlation to the stock, crypto, and real estate market. So if one of these markets dips, your peer-to-peer -peer loans won't be directly affected. This makes peer-to-peer -peer lending a great choice for a more diversified portfolio. One of the most popular platforms for peer-to-peer -peer lending in Canada is GoPeer. Gross returns on GoPeer can range from 7.5% to 
28%, which on the lower end still beats inflation, even when we have high inflation. GoPeer is easy to use and they will help guide you to make a diversified loan portfolio. Also, GoPeer offers auto deposits and auto invests, so you can invest with GoPeer and earn passive income. But just like stocks in the crypto market, there is risk involved. And of course, higher returns involve higher risks. So consider less risky loans for a lower return if you just want to hedge against inflation. Speaking of risks, the next asset class you can invest in is cryptocurrencies. There's two ways you can beat inflation with cryptocurrencies. The first option is to buy and sell for more in the future or by staking cryptocurrencies. The largest of the cryptocurrencies is Bitcoin. We are the Bitcoin, boy. Bitcoin is often referred to as gold 2.0. Just like gold, there is only so much Bitcoin in the world, 21 million to be exact. While fiat currency like the Canadian or US dollar can be printed over and over again. This causes inflation to rise. This is the reason why Bitcoin is considered a store of value. As for returns, over the past 10 years, Bitcoin has produced an average analyzed return of 230%. A lot of other cryptocurrencies also saw huge gains like Ethereum, Solana, and Cardano. With these kind of returns, not only will you beat inflation, but you will beat gold, hedge funds, financial advisors, and the S&P 500. Even if you take away the capital gains of crypto, staking crypto alone will beat inflation. Staking is when you locked in your cryptocurrency for a period of time and earn rewards for doing so. Staking rewards can range from 2 to 12%. If you want to stake crypto, my favorite platform to stake is Crypto.com. Although cryptocurrencies have the highest returns for any assets, they are also the riskiest asset on this list. So only invest what you're willing to lose and keep your crypto allocation to a small percentage of your total investment portfolio. Before we get into the next asset on this list, take a quick second and hit the like button. And if you really like it, share this video on social media. This asset is one of the best assets to have when high inflation hits, and that's real estate. If you can't beat them, join them. When inflation increases, so does the value of real estate and rent. So wouldn't it be nice if you were the one who benefited from this? Real estate, just like gold and silver, is a tangible asset, meaning it's a physical asset you can actually touch. Real estate is a great hedge against inflation for a few reasons. The value of real estate appreciates faster than inflation. Imagine buying a house in Toronto like 30 years ago. How much do you think that house would be worth now? Now imagine if you didn't buy that house 30 years ago and just kept that money in a savings account. That money today wouldn't buy anything in Toronto now. So you can see how inflation over time destroys your money's value. If that house was a rental property, you could also increase your rent to keep up with inflation. And lastly, when you purchase a property, you can use leverage so you don't need to pay in full. When you do this, you're using the lender's money to increase your returns. Then when high inflation hits, your mortgage payments remain the same, but the buying power of your debt payments are worth less. This only works if you purchase your property prior to higher inflation times. In other words, when you borrow money before inflation, you repay your debt with money that's worth less than the money you borrowed. You can also do things like holding off on big ticket items during high inflation times. This isn't a hedge against inflation, but it's a way to avoid high inflation consequences. Big ticket items can be anything from purchasing a new vehicle, new house, renovations, expensive appliances, electronics, or or even an event like a wedding or vacation. High inflation doesn't last forever, so if you can hold off on your big ticket items, do it. On the other hand, while inflation is low, purchase your big ticket items and actually purchase your smaller items you may need now or in the near future. You can even stock up on things like meats, frozen and dry food goods, and things like hygiene and cleaning products. Doing this can also save you money. If you have a stockpile of an item, when it gets low, you can purchase more when a good sale comes on instead of purchasing at regular price because you need it now. Even if high inflation has already started, it's possible inflation will get worse. So you might be better off making your purchases now during high inflation times if you think more inflation is coming. The problem is it's hard to predict when inflation will go up, get worse, or even go back down. So do a bit of your own research when deciding if you should purchase now or wait. In conclusion, the last thing you want to do when inflation is high is hold cash. Your cash is losing its buying power, so you should stay invested. And to protect you from market volatility, you need to diversify. This means not putting all your eggs in one basket. You can diversify your portfolio by holding stocks, ETFs, bonds, cryptocurrencies, real estate, peer-to-peer -peer loans, precious metals, and more. And don't forget to invest in yourself, whether that's an education, training, or a small business. If you want to keep educating yourself, check out one of the videos on the right of the screen. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep making money moves. Peace!